<laughs> and welcome again to Lyumi Financial Corner. With us once again, Michael Zaremski, head of U.S. private banking for Bank Lyumi, member of the investment committee for Lumi Investment Services. Michael, it's been a while. We welcome Bank Lumi. We welcome you back to the airways. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much for having me, Zev. It's a pleasure to be back on the air. Thank you. We've got some nice reactions, so we're glad that uh, we'll be able to continue giving people some good information which they can use. Michael, right now the stock market is doing well, but there are people that are skeptical, that are nervous, saying that it's not going to, it may not continue, it may be down for a slowdown, perhaps even a recession. What is your perspective? What is your professional opinion? So generally speaking, Zev, I remain you know, fairly bullish on the outlook for the economy. Uh, I know that there's a lot of skepticism and there's a lot of concern. A lot of it seems to be on the fact that we continue to be in the longest recovery cycle uh, in history. Uh, but I believe that there's a lot of reasons why that may continue, and I think I'm a lot more bullish and a lot more upbeat about the economic prospects for the U.S. than kind of general market convention. Uh, I think particularly a lot of the folks that are on the bond side look at where we are with yields. They look at some of the data points in terms of the bond market, and I think that some of that's misleading because, again, as I think we've talked about multiple times, I think many of the data points that people are looking at is data and information that's based on an industrial age economy, and I really believe that we've shifted gears and moved into much more of an information age economy. So I think that some of the data signs that people look at that have historically been challenging in the past have changed, and again, I think that this is something that we need to continue to explore as we move forward. I remember when we spoke about the fact that things have changed and while one thing might have been a certain way years ago with today's technology, things have changed so radically that what held true in the past doesn't hold true today. Absolutely. And one of the things that I point to a lot is this kind of common uh, theme that people say, well, it's been a really long cycle and it has to end. And one of the points that I've really made and I, I think is very important to focus on is we really haven't had a boom. And if we haven't had a boom, then do we really need to have a bust? So what I mean by this is if you think about what a recession is and what has historically caused a recession, a recession has been caused when people are extrapolating the last data point or the last sales point and continue to think that that point will last forever. Typically, a longer order cycle and an inventory build cycle would lead to a position where when things slow down, companies will have excess inventory, excess goods, and then they need to kind of take a pause or a reset in order to work through inventory. And what we continue to see in the economy is that we've moved into real time, we've moved into just in time um, on a lot of the inventory cycles. So again, just you know, to explain it in detail, my general assumption today is that Walmart will have a very good idea at midnight exactly how much toothpaste they sold that day and therefore they'll know what the proper level of toothpaste to stock on the shelves would be for the next day. So they're not really going to go into a situation where they're over-ordering or under-ordering and creating uh, undue strains on the supply chain. Everything is going to be handled in much more incremental manner. Similarly, in the past, uh, the critis one of the criticisms of the Federal Reserve was that they were somewhat counter-cyclical. By the time they got data, by the time they reacted to data, and by the time that they made uh, changes to interest rate policy, it would almost be counter-cyclical because the market had reacted and changed. In today's world, the Fed is moving at a much more measured rate. The data and the information they get is much better. And therefore, I think what you're seeing is an economy that's moving much closer to or hovering around a 2% growth rate without having a boom cycle and without having a bust cycle. Um, when we look back at data for GDP growth over the last few years, I would argue that in the end of 2015, while we didn't technically have a recession, we did have a big reset as GDP dropped down to near zero. And then for the next you know, two and a half to almost three years, we had growth rates that hovered right around 2%. You know, in early uh, 18 or late 2017, because of some of the tax policies, we saw a little bit of a bump up in that. And frankly, I would argue that the fourth quarter of 2018, when we saw GDP drop down to about 1.1%, I would argue that that was kind of also the recession or the reset. And from that point on, again, we've seen GDP growth hovering at around 2%. So a big part of my argument is that if the economy has been a lot more finely tuned, then I think that, again, we've taken off the top part of the boom. And if we've taken our, off the top part of the boom, we've probably also dropped off the bottom part of the bust. 
But you're saying it's like a machine that's running much more smooth, smoothly today because of efficiency, which technology lets companies be more careful what they're purchasing and how to react in real time as opposed to down the road. That's a very big part of it. And then I would also just make a couple of other observations. Uh, the economy that we live in today is far more oriented towards consumer services and a lot less oriented towards industrial and manufacturing. In fact, about 18% of the GDP today is industrial manufacturing. About 80% or about 70% of it is consumer oriented. So even if you do have a slowdown or a recession in the manufacturing sector of the economy, um, it's a relatively small part of the daily economic activity that we see in this country. If you go to a company like Germany, which is a much bigger exporter and the industrial or, or manufacturing part of their economy is significantly larger, somewhere around 30% or a little bit greater, uh, a hiccup in the manufacturing side is a lot more impactful to the overall economy than it is in the United States. And again, when you look at the United States as an importing country, uh, we actually benefit quite a bit from a strong dollar. And we benefit a lot when there's weakness in other parts of the globe because our dollar goes stronger and we can stretch it further in terms of importing goods and services. And a lot of this is just based on the overall strength and confidence that people have in the U.S. economy. You're listening to Leumi Financial Corner. With us is Michael Zaremski, head of U.S. private banking for Bank Leumi, member of the investment committee for Leumi Investment Services. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of Michael, his number is 212-407-4372. Michael Zarumpke, thank you for joining us. We look forward to speaking with you with our next installment of Lumi Financial Report. Thank you very much, Dev. Appreciate it.